Yo, what's up? It's me, Mad McMahon here. And you may notice it's been a little bit. Typically, I upload about every month, every other month, maybe. It's been longer. I can tell you why, though. It's because uh, I had surgery on my ears. And to make a long story short, I couldn't hear for about a good two or three weeks. And I couldn't really go back and listen to the recordings through OBS and know if they're good or not. So uh, I decided to just say, screw it. Scrap any sort of recordings I've attempted and just start anew. And uh, on top of that, I managed to acquire more of today's subject, which is PS4 games. Yes, I actually own a PS4. I believe I did talk about that in my last video, but since then, my collection has doubled or even tripled, quadrupled. It's gotten a lot bigger. Let's put it that way. It's gotten tons bigger. I have plenty more games. In fact, I've also gotten other things besides PS4 games, but that's going to be very small in terms of what this video is about. Majority of the stuff here today is, like the background suggests, PS4 games. Let's actually do a little bit of a swerve and talk about the non-PS4 things first and foremost. Let me pause and get everything set up and I'll be right back. First up in the non uh, PS4 related things we're talking about, it's the Gully Kit Nintendo Switch Hall Effect controller. Yes, it does Hall Effect joysticks. Now, unlike my GameCube style uh, Joy-Cons, which supposedly have Hall Effect, I think this actually does have Hall Effect. Now, whether or not the last, I don't know. Um, when it comes to the build quality though, it's hit or miss. I mean, I would say the actual button feel is okay. I mean, they, they're they sort of like an Xbox style sort of configuration. The shoulder buttons are decent, they're clicky, but they're not like too clicky and they're a little bit spongy, but that's okay. Triggers are all right. Analog sticks, they feel fine. Um, It has a sort of like faux metal aesthetic throughout the whole thing, but I would certainly say that it, it's not something that's gonna hold up. I, I can imagine the paint chipping, you know, with time. Uh, the D-pad is okay. And the rest of the buttons are just about the same as the face buttons, I would say. Um, it does have turbo which you know uh, means you can't use it in competition so went where also uh it has motion controls i believe although i could be wrong on that one whoa there hey sorry about the sudden jump uh i actually have some news for you about this controller i did a little bit of research off screen and let me tell you there's more to this than meets the eye Apparently as hole sensing triggers as well as hole sensing uh, sticks. It also has like patented buttons that are supposed to last longer. It has a uh, amiibo functionality on this controller for Switch only, obviously. Uh, it also has the ability to wake up the Switch, which is interesting. Uh, this button right here, this like button right in the center, uh, if you can look, it's the one uh, right uh, below the gear. Apparently that's an AI button that can supposedly learn your inputs and what it does with it, I don't know. Uh, it sounds like a bunch of marketing blur. Apparently this is like a super controller. And yeah, it does have a gyroscope. I did check that too. Uh, it's called the Zen Pro Wireless Controller. And at this point, I didn't, I didn't even know Goalie Kid had this many controllers out. So uh, that's kind of insane. And uh, it works on, uh, on top of working on Windows, like I said, works on Android. It also apparently works on Mac, I think, as well, supposedly. And a D input, you know, I don't know. And I guess it also has like a long lasting battery or something. Like 50 hours is what it claims. I mean, Jesus Christ, you would think like it would be like a freaking $100 controller if that were the case. I'd pay nowhere near that for that. So either they're lying or this is one hell of a deal. Basically, I think if all that is to be true, I would definitely use this as my main driver for my computer as opposed to the controller I would be replacing it with which is a nice segue to be talking about the next controller which is the Xbox Series X controller which is uh really hard to say so uh Microsoft get your shit together especially after you close down freaking uh, the Hi-Fi Rush studio as well as the studio that made the Evil Within 2. Uh maybe you shouldn't have bought Activision for like a million billion dollars ever thought about that Microsoft? Anyway going back to their controller design yeah if you notice i replaced the uh joysticks again with uh, uh detachable ones and i will say this much i did a very crappy job because uh two of the screws don't even fit anymore uh it, if you hear this it like it like sort of jostles about when you touch it and on top of that i don't know what the hell i did but uh when using the um triggers one of the triggers if you press it down normally it doesn't go 100 percent. you basically have to like press like really hard for it to get to 100 percent. and i don't get what i did because i've taken it apart several times i don't know what the hell i did wrong or how to fix it i mean who knows it's just freaking anti-right to repair bullshit is what it is truth be told should not be that hard to take this thing apart and put it back together but it really didn't want you in there as you can tell 
Intel filed the mistakes that I made. Yes, it was the company's fault, not mine, you see. But I'll tell you one thing that actually did go successfully, well, mostly successfully, uh, was my brand new PS4 controller. I got it at Walmart. Yeah, I got it at Walmart itself. It was about five, ten dollars cheaper. I don't remember how much it was exactly. I think it was like fifty five or I don't remember how much. It was it was pretty cheap. I think like total with taxes it was like sixty five, I think. As opposed to like the seventy or seventy five I had to pay normally. So yeah, uh, it was pretty pretty good deal uh, for a brand new one and uh they sort of changed the design of the new ones they're a lot more matte and on top of that i took this apart obviously because you know look the sticks are like metal ones the ones that i previously had in my xbox one uh the design is a lot different than, than, than the other ones i've taken apart it certainly seems like they've revised it since the last time I've, I've taken one apart went mostly smoothly um i think all the buttons work <laughs> That's it. Okay, so we're talking about the last uh, non-PlayStation thing before we get straight into the games. And the thing of which we're talking about that is non-PlayStation related is the MiU Mini Plus. You may notice that this has Onion OS installed. It has an analog pocket skin. It came pre-installed with Onion OS because I bought it off of eBay for about 50 bucks. And the uh, uh, grip that you're seeing right here, about 13, 3D printed, feels just fine. The Mi Mini Plus is an emulation powerhouse. It has several buttons. It has uh, ABXY in the uh, Nintendo layout. It has a option slash menu button, uh, like an, a modifier button, if you will. It has select and start. That's up, down, left, right. It has a uh, four R and L buttons, uh, that being R and R2 and L and L2. And as well, it has a micro SD card slot, it has an auxiliary port for headphone goodness. It has a USB type C port. It has volume up and down, which if you press the modifier button becomes brightness up and down as a power button. It plays games quite well. Pretty much almost everything I've thrown at it, with a few exceptions, works beautifully. It is a wonderful system that can play most of the games I want to play. Let me tell you all the systems I have installed on it. Of course, those systems where uh, all the BIOSes and whatnot were obtained legally. On top of that, all the games that I uh, play on them for those systems are also ones that, uh, you know, I ripped from the cartridge or CD or what have you. I totally legally obtained these, definitely, 100%. But let's talk about the systems. And I wrote it down on a notepad because I am tired. And I feel like I'm going to repeat myself if I don't go off of that notepad. Apologies in advance if I look kind of stiff when talking. The systems in no particular order are Arcade, which came with the system, uh, games of, of which, which I'm sure that person also legally obtained. And those were mostly, you know, just your typical arcade affair. Uh, I, I will say this much, some games on there definitely should not have been on there. Like there's like Tekken games and shit. That would have never ran. Uh, Neo Geo games, that was also included with the system. Like I said, legally obtained. Uh, yeah, the Neo Geo games ran flawlessly. I love them. Atari 2600. Um, I'd be surprised if it ran poorly at all like it, the, that it should run like beyond what the atari can be capable of that's how that's how far atari 2600 emulation has come as well as nes and every game system going forward i put my own games on so famicom disk system game boy game by color game boy advance snes genesis and the genesis accessories being sega 32x sega cd can't play the sega 32x cd games uh, the, the combo games can't play that uh turbo graphics 16 turbo graphics cd and uh, by the way the 32x uh system i only know one game for that's uh, Tempo, because it's probably the only game I can tolerate, because I'm not the biggest fan of Sonic, so uh, I'm especially not going to like the divisive one in the series, Knuckles Chaotix, because I don't like tether mechanics like at all in games ever. Uh, PlayStation 1 is the one I was surprised by. Uh, I own a ton of PlayStation 1 games on my uh, computer, which I've tamed legally, um, and I put a good majority of them on the freaking uh, system, although I can't play uh, dual analog uh, games, but I don't really play very many dual analog games on my emulator anyway, on my computer. Yeah, I'm surprised, like, pretty much any game I throughout it with a few exceptions like there were some games where like the background visuals weren't available or like the sound wasn't on for certain games but for the most part it works uh pico 8 was another uh, system I, I i installed the fake 8 bios which is which is open source so i mean i i feel like admitting that i downloaded it is not exactly admitting to piracy because it's not yeah i ran off a of fake 8 and uh i was playing a bunch of pico 8 games on there and, and some of the pico 8 games ran poorly maybe it's because they were poorly optimized maybe it's because they're just too powerful for even uh the powerful me 
Mi U Mini. But yeah, some games I, I just had to get rid of because they, they wouldn't play well. Finally, we have source ports. Uh, source ports ranging from like Open Tyrion, which Tyrion was made open source years ago, so it's pretty much been ported to everything. Uh, as well as there's Cave Story, which was the free version, obviously. So of course that stuff is openly free to port. You know, however which way you want. Uh, but then, then there's some stuff that you have to uh, obtain files uh, to be able to uh, put on there uh, legally, whichever means you do. Of course, I, I chose the legal option. That being uh, letter B six times, yeah, I'm surprised that even has source ports. I guess uh, someone, some some bastard out there was so dedicated enough to get that shit uh, ported to everything. As well as uh, Cannonball, which uh, it makes sense because it, it was a reverse engineered project. Um, as well as things like like Jazz Jackrabbit. Not the sequel, but the original, which I much prefer the sequel, but this, the first game's not too bad. Yet, yet, yet another epic game, I know crazy right anyway uh this system is quite the system and i love it quite a bit um i use it as my main emulation driver now when it comes to portability because uh, my phone i had to downgrade you know even though it was a newer model and i had to replace it with it has less storage and it doesn't have as powerful of a, of a gpu or cpu or whatever it's uh it's definitely a downgrade but it was cheaper than buying something with a contract i wanted a uh, no contract phone because my previous phone was contract based and it was a good phone but but eventually it just died. And uh, I just needed a new phone quick and dirty. So I went to Walmart. That's all I have to say about that. Every one, every one of these fucking videos I reference Forrest Gump, God, God fuck. So I know it's been over 10 minutes since I first teased the uh, PlayStation games I was going to talk about. Well, we're finally here. And first up is a game that I got from Surugaya. Believe it or not, me and Surugaya are friends again. I'm still friends with uh, PlayAsia. We can both be friends now. Uh, the reason why I'm uh, reacquainted with Surugaya is because uh, I basically started up a brand new account uh, with a different email, same information, and uh, I think for whatever reason, maybe it's because I started with fresh information and I have since not lost my wallet, which I think was the main reason why they wouldn't accept my orders. Well, basically now they have accepted my orders and I've made three orders with them, uh, all PlayStation 4 games, funny enough, and they have arrived and they've been wonderful to me. So uh, we're friends again. And the first uh, sign of friendship was was, uh, I believe, another game, actually, we're going to be talking about later. But the second sign is a Kai Katana Sheen. Yep, it's a collector's edition box. And inside this collector's edition is uh, the game itself, a uh, CD, as well as an acrylic stand that looks like basically an arcade placard. And uh, I will not be using that on my shelf because the stands themselves are super flimsy. It's not exactly the most impressive art. Um, I kept the box though because it looks cool. Soundtrack itself is quite nice. The game Akai Katana Shin, or I guess Sheen as I said before, is a shmup by City Connection and made by Cave, one of my favorite shoot 'em up developers, alongside Psycho, as well as uh, Who Could Go Wrong with Treasure and their uh, duology of Radiant Silver Gun, as well as uh, Ikaruga, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about a cave shooter. Akai uh, Katana Sheen actually comes with three different versions of Akai Katana. It's a trilogy. It's if you will. And uh, the controls are quite nice. Uh, I play with my arcade stick. My arcade stick has issues where it doesn't want to press select or start. I might eventually just have to say fuck it and just play with the controller because that shit is frustrating as hell to get set up. But what I played of it, I really enjoy. It's your typical shmuppy, uh, bullet hell-y cave goodness. Man, they don't make developers like they used to anymore, at least when it comes to Japanese shoot 'em ups in my humble opinion. This is a Japanese game. This is one of a few Japanese games that I own that are are in English um, and for the most part Japanese games typically are not in English uh, on a uh, PlayStation 4 and if they are the buttons are how they are uh, in Japan where circle is usually um, confirm and cross is deny uh, and so usually they're flip-flop or should I say we have it flip-flopped in America because Japan came first but yeah um, it doesn't matter if the game's in English either it, it defaults to that layout yeah I mean it, the information on what Japanese games are in English is pretty sparse pretty much the only reliable source I've ever had is PlayAsia. This one was a success. And pretty much all the ones uh, I got off of Surugaya have been successful. Let's move on to the next game. Next one is one that I got on eBay. Wanna buy? That's a Weird Al song. Remember that one? Anyway, here's Bloodborne. Got it for uh, super cheap. 
uh, considering uh, the condition and the type of game that it is. Um, Bloodborne, I actually originally played on PC. There was an abandoned PC port that I played. Uh, it's actually, I think, one of the best uh, Souls likes made by From Software. I'm not the biggest fan of Elden Ring. I thought the performance was dog shit on PC. Uh, I thought that the multiplayer aspect of it was super annoying. I, I never turned it on. It was not as fun as what this game is. I feel like this is the best iteration they've ever done. And it's only on PS4. And I guess there's also an enhanced version that you can play by popping this into your PS5. I hate the fact that it's in 30 FPS, but it's livable, you know? But the atmosphere is great. Great. The gameplay is freaking great as well. Uh, customization is pretty in-depth despite the fact you barely ever see your character with that customization on. But uh, you know what? It's a pretty freaking awesome game. That's like saying water is wet. Like with many early PlayStation 4 exclusives, this involved the now defunct Japan Studio. And you'll notice that a lot of the games I'm going to show you are in some way associated with Japan Studio. And uh, rest in peace to them. I think Sony killed them off way too soon. I think if they just kept to their, you know, mentality they had during the PS1 era of we're a system for everybody. We got games ranging from Wacky and Wild to the cinematic adventures they like to do now. If they made the games with different budgets, with different aspirations, and with different developers from all around the world like they have in the past, I think they'd be a lot better off in this current PS5 generation. Because the problem is they just don't have a lot of exclusives to the PS5. And, you know, most of the stuff that would be exclusive is either on PC or it's on PS4 outright. And they never really got started with this generation. And I think one of the main reasons why PS4 did so well to begin with, a part of it was because Xbox failed miserably with the Xbox One. Part of it is because there were Japan studio funded games like Bloodborne that made the console enticing to those who wanted to play it, you know, because they were exclusive. There were games that were worth buying the freaking system for. New day, new recording. Let's start off with a game that starts with D. Yes, it's uh, Dangerous Driving Plus, look at this, Danger Zone 2. Now, uh, this game is uh, made by the developer Maximum Games. And Maximum Games is made up of former developers from the now defunct, rest in peace, Criterion Games. Criterion Games made, of course, the Burnout series, among other things they've uh, developed over the years. But uh, EA bought them up. They made a few Burnout games, some very good, some not very good, like the mobile game. But ultimately, their best game is probably Burnout Paradise. And uh, you can play it now, but God knows how long that will last. That's beside the point. We're talking about Dangerous Dragon and Danger Zone 2. Let's start off with Danger Zone 2 because it's the lesser of the two games. Alphabetically it comes to actually first and uh, I think it's actually uh, you know a good place to start. It's based off the crash mode of the Burnout series. The crash mode basically details that you um, go on the highway, some sort of highway, it's not always a highway, but basically you go you go on some sort of highway, you navigate cars going in both directions, trying to make sure not to crash into them. If you get close you get a reward for it. If you uh, keep a consistent boost you get a reward for it. If, you know, you make a jump or drive on the wrong side of the road, you get a bonus. But once you get to the uh, intersection, which is the goal, you uh, press the button and you blow up. And then the cars that are beside them, you know, they start crashing and however much damage you rack up will determine your score. But you also have money power-ups as well as explosion power-ups that you can either drive into them and they'll instantly explode or you uh, you get another uh, boost that lets you explode. And I think you have like a set amount of boost depending on how many cars explode or, or, or crash to begin with. So there is that to consider like it'll go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 And then you get another explosion. I think in certain uh, Levels you can uh, crash into cars before you end up going to the uh, Intersection it all really depends, but that's not the main really, you know feature of this dual pack The main feature of the dual pack is dangerous driving and dangerous driving is the rest of the modes of the burnout series Now it's not as in-depth or open-world like burnout paradise nothing ever will be in my opinion that was a one-of-a-kind game this game comes pretty close to scratching that long since absent burnout series itch dangerous driving is very fun it has all the classic modes you know it has the uh, just straight racing it has racing with uh, takedowns is what they call them where basically you crash into cars and they go every which way I'm sure there's other modes of the game but the only one I can recall besides those two is the pursuit mode and the pursuit mode is basically uh, you being a uh, copper and you need to take down the bad guy and he's uh driving away from you as fast as he physically can you know he's uh putting his feet on the gas and you 
got to catch up to him and take him out. You got to keep him separated. Well, in this case, you, you don't keep him separated. You freaking ram into him and keep him at bay from uh, running away. I'm rhyming and whatnot. I'm a poet, I guess. Well, I am a poet, but that's beside the point. Anywho, uh, the next game up is uh, Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition. And if you look, it's Japanese and it works in English. Yes. Now, apparently, the PS4 version is the best version of the game. I've read some uh, Steam reviews, and apparently they gimped the PC port. And obviously, since it's the special edition, it's better than the uh, PS3 regular edition. And the only way you can buy Devil May Cry 4 physically is from the Japanese version or the Asian version. And lucky for me, the Japanese version is cheaper, and it's also in English, which is why I got it. Now, the only downside is, like with uh, any other Japanese game, the controls are slightly different, but so be it. Who cares? I did play the quote-unquote gimped PC port through my brother's uh, Steam share, I did like it, but I did want to own it physically and I did want to play it without restrictions of being held back by when my brother plays uh, his games and I get logged out of his stuff. And plus, I'm pretty sure I don't even have Steam share with him anymore. I, I think he changed PCs at some point or something happened and I'll have to get that back on. The game itself has very long missions that uh, if you quit, you have to uh, restart your progress in order to get back to where you were. But it does save the uh, stuff you earned along the way, but you have to basically get a mission in one go. That is a little bit annoying, but I do enjoy the game enough where I'm sure I can pop it in, have a little bit of a session, beat a level, and be done with it, and do it some other time. I don't really give a shit about the story. I know some people love the story. Not my thing. Uh, speaking of that, uh, I forgot to mention this, but DMC5 does a similar thing to DMC4, the best version, that being the PS5 version, and the PS4 version and the PC version are gimped. Sony um, likes to have their exclusives be better than uh, all the other versions, including the, their own version, the PS4 version, and same thing with this one, the PS3 version wars. Capcom just loves doing that in general, I guess, as well. So that is something to consider. I haven't played much of the game, so I'm kind of just waffling right now. I like the uh, gunplay. I like the uh, controls. Of course, um, I'm a huge fan of the uh, aesthetic and the sort of like rank system. And anytime I review a eBay seller and uh, their service, I always say SSS rank, and that's a reference to Devil May Cry. So I guess I'm a huge fan of that sort of coolness that uh, Devil May Cry has alongside No More Heroes and whatnot. It's like Japanese Japanese, you know, mid-tier coolness, in my opinion. It's not the flashiest, it's not the best looking, obviously it's based off the PS3 version, but it's a solid game. I would recommend picking up this package, it's not very expensive. As long as you can wait to get it from Japan, I say go right a freaking head. Hey guys, uh, I forgot to talk about some stuff in between the last recording session. Uh, I completely forgot that part of my channel is that I show off things in the case, such as Insert Squad Hype, let's freaking go, it's for the Order 1886, a game I will never play. You know, top of that, we freaking have Dante, and Dante has a manual! A manual squad hype, even though it's more of like a DVD insert, but still, let's a freaking a go! I completely forgot to mention those, which is like totally not like me. Anyway, let's continue on with some games, which by the way, in between recording sessions, I found out there's more games I gotta talk about than I ever even imagined. I only talked about like three games in the last video. Jesus, I am way off. So I have tons more to talk about. Trust me, I have completely just massively increased my collection since the last time I've seen you. Uh, next up is a dual pack. Well, two games, but I bought them at the same time. And they're in the same series. It's Dragon Quest Heroes, which by the way, has a freaking manual, manual squad hype, as well as Dragon Quest Heroes 2, which has a uh, insert for Kingdom Hearts. Uh, funny enough, it's a uh, Kingdom Hearts 2.8 final chapter prologue, which I'm not gonna own because it contains the Kingdom Hearts games I'm not interested in. And Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2 are uh, Muso games. They're in the... Uh, Warrior series, as it's known in the West. And uh, they're, they're sort of RPG-ified Musou games with Dragon Quest visuals and also Dragon Quest elements as well. The music is pretty good. I mean, I, I don't know if it's done by that racist guy who died, so rest in piss that guy. But uh, I, I do know it really said it is good, so it probably isn't by him because he purposely tended to gimp music in the West. I don't know why. He was just a weirdo like that. I don't know if you noticed, uh, based on the box, but this has a PS4 exclusive item includes slime weapon set. Look at that. It's focused for just enough time where I was able to show it. Uh, the second game doesn't really have any exclusive uh, content as far as I know. I actually played, I believe, the 
first and second game through my brother's library, uh, Steam Library Share. But I wanted the games on PS4 because I just wanted them on the same platform. I wanted the superior ports because Square Enix and PC ports don't go well together. I just really, really, really like the Musou games. They're like some of my favorite games in the entire series of games that have ever been made in genre-wise. They're one of my favorites. I do like the uh, enemy variety. I do like the mission format. I like the mission format of the second game a lot better than the first game, but I do think the first game is slept on and it is worth buying alongside the second game. And I will say this much, um, I love the fact that you can name the characters whatever you want. Pretty much a staple of all Dragon Quest games, which I feel like a lot of RPGs don't really let you do anymore, unfortunately. I mean, there's not a whole lot of, if any, voice acting, really. I'm sure there isn't cutscenes and whatnot. I skip that shit, so I don't really know. I would say, pick up Dragon Quest Heroes and Dragon Quest Heroes 2 for cheap. In total, I probably paid like $30 for both of those games at my local uh, game shop. Um, I bought them because I saw them there at the same time, and so I just like purposely drove over there once I had money. Specifically bought those games. So I would say, I think I paid like 16 and like 12 for 2 and 1 respectively. So I think it was like 28, and I think I had like a 20% off as well, because you know, the store has like a discount program where depending on how often you go and how often you check in, that's when you get a discount you can apply to use games. And so I applied it and I got however much money off. I bought the games and I'm super happy with them. Pick them up if you like them. Anyway, I'm gonna leave and go let Emmett back into the house because I accidentally left him outside. Oopsie! The next PS4 game that I'm going to be talking about is Everybody's Golf. Yes, this series was formerly known as Hot Shots Golf in the West, and I actually used to own a Hot Shots Golf and Hot Shots Tennis game, uh, dual pack that is, on PSP back in the day. Yeah, this is made by the same developers, at least I think, I could be wrong. Clap Hands Limited is the developer, and actually if you've watched uh, previous videos that I've made in the past, you would know that I've actually covered another one of Clap Hands uh, games, that being Easy Come Easy Golf on Nintendo Switch. I've covered it in the Shh Mads Miski series, as well as uh, a recent video on my channel that was not Shh Mads Miski related. It's actually like a game video talking about uh, games that I thought deserved physicals. Yeah, so uh, I'll go briefly over the differences between Easy Come Easy golf and everybody's golf so the one of the main big differences is that everybody's golf no longer has online nor does it have uh, a lot of uh, the, the same modes that uh freaking easy come easy golf has yeah they shut down the servers for everybody's golf in 2021 this has more avatar customizability easy come easy golf tends to have uh more like cartoony uh, specific characters with, with specific names this game lets you make any character you want and even the characters that you meet in the game are definitely made with the same sort of character customization tool that you're characters made with. This game has an overworld whereas Easy Come Easy Golf has a menu and also the uh, the amount of modes that you have access to right away is a lot vaster. That's even a word. And uh, Easy Come Easy Golf whereas Everybody's Golf is very much sort of you play as you go and as you go you earn more modes. This game has more reliance on the meters whereas Easy Come Easy Golf also has a mode where you can use the analog sticks but I never use it because it's super hard to figure out. So basically I play the game the same way in both games. Uh, Everybody's Golf is graphically very impressive I think. Um, I know some people might I think it's basic but I think it looks very good especially on my base PS4. I just like that sort of Japan studio charm because this is yet another Japan studio funded game and actually it's probably one of the last ones because eventually Japan studio went the way of the dinosaur unfortunately. Yet another case of uh, Sony just freaking shit up for everybody because like Sony doesn't really have any other golf games besides everybody's golf so they're really uh, lacking in a market that I think they they should be filling. I, I know they have the uh, MLB the show series and they pretty much have a monopoly on that. That's more like simulation and, and while I'm, not, I'm actually kind of a fan of baseball games I think the whole simulation thing is good for some people but I think the arcadey fun that the everybody's golf series presented definitely has its charm and people do want to play these sort of things in my opinion pick up this game or if you want to play online I would say pick up the switch version of easy come easy golf Next up in the video is Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise. It is made by Ryu Gagotoku Studios. Yes, it is made in 2017, so this is one of the later games in the uh, Ryu Gagotoku timeline. Don't know what engine it runs off of. The game itself is actually one of the first ones in a long while made by Ryu Gagotoku, and this actually started a trend for later games to be this way. Yes, it has both English and Japanese voice acting. I always pick the Japanese voice acting because that's just the way I like it. I feel like it's superior. I feel like the only reason why you would ever pick the dub is if you had troubles reading subtitles like my mom. 
Yes, or if you are streaming and let's say someone has a terrible bitrate and they can't really read the subtitles anyway. The guy who voices Kiryu, believe it or not, also voices the uh, character in this game, the main character, Kenshiro. Which, funny enough, uh, also led to a DLC that you could buy uh, later on where Kiryu actually uh, can be a skin for uh, Ken in the game. The game itself is definitely in the style of the Judgment and now called Like a Dragon but previously called Yakuza series. The story is definitely also in the style of the Yakuza series slash like a dragon and judgment games in the sense that certain cutscenes are pre-rendered certain cutscenes are in a sort of uh, visual novel style and certain cutscenes are in engine i'm not much of a fan of the fist of the north star anime but this game is pretty freaking cool story-wise you don't really need to know a whole lot about the actual uh, anime itself now this came with uh, a day one dlc called the destiny talisman set i don't think you can actually buy the destiny talisman set on the playstation store so that is kind of unfortunate and not to mention the code itself uh, expired in 2020 so even if i were to show you the code it doesn't matter you can never use it ever again so those who uh, missed out you missed out this claims that it's a ps4 uh, console exclusive i don't even necessarily know if it's just a console exclusive i don't think you can buy it on steam so it might be only exclusive to the ps4 just in general i mean obviously ps5 can play ps4 backwards compatibly and if you look at the reverse it has a cover on the back that you can uh, flip flop although i typically don't like doing Doing that because I like uh, my ESRB ratings and my little blurbs on the back to be on uh, the back as opposed to just like some generic art. Yeah, I haven't played much about the game, hence why I'm kind of waffling at the moment. Next up is the, believe it or not, the only greatest hits game I currently own in my PS4 collection at the moment. I actually bought uh, the greatest hits because I wanted all the DLC or all the uh, post-game updates on the disc, so I wouldn't have to download as much updates. Yes, it's uh, God of War 3 Remastered. I guess this is called PlayStation Hits and not Greatest Hits, so just a little bit of a clarification there. Either way, it's in that red case, which I'm not really too picky about. God of War 3 Remastered was originally on uh, PS3 and later ported uh, to PS4. Well, I should say the original God of War 3 was on PS3 and it was later ported as God of War Remastered on PS4. Uh, I don't think any other God of War games, PS3 and and, uh, before are on physical for PS4. But God of War 3 is and I will say this much, people who say that the God of War story is super immature compared to uh, God of War uh, Reboot and God of War Ragnarok are simply lying to themselves. The game has depth. The game is cool. The game is very much adult themed. It's not just simply immature gore and uh, melodrama. It is definitely a legit game. And in some aspect, it's better than the newer games. Uh, I definitely miss that sort of third uh, person person over the shoulder wide aspect ratio sort of game where you hack and slash. I actually like the God of War 2018 game. I like playing it quite a bit. I don't think it's necessarily a replacement though for that classic God of War format. And I haven't really seen a lot of God of War clones come out in the past however many years. I wish they would just make another God of War game or a God of War clone in that style of gameplay that I like so much. I just freaking love the uh, gore. I love the gameplay. I love the cinematic aspect of it. It. You know, Santa Monica Studios was certainly uh, hitting on all cylinders in this one, and I feel like nowadays Sony could learn a thing or two from the games of old that they've made, even on the PS3 or even the early PS4. You'll see a trend in a lot of these games that I'm showing that they are games that I would only pick up on PS4 because either A, they're super cheap, or B, because they're uh, actually PS4 exclusive, or let's say they're PS4 console exclusive, or maybe in certain cases, you know, it, it's ideal to get the PS4 version. I'm not going to be getting things that I could normally get on PC or get things that I already own on PC and God of War uh, 3 Remastered is certainly something that I can only get at least the remastered version on PS4 hence why I got it yo what's up anyway on to the next game i was actually going to talk about a game after this alphabetically but i actually forgot that i had a game that came before it a game by japan studio yet another reason why sony should not have shut this studio down because they made the cult classic gravity rush 2 i do not own gravity rush the original i wish i did um i've been meaning to pull the trigger on a copy that i found on ebay for about 60. Uh, it's the hong kong copy so it's not ideal the american copy goes for a ton and uh, the European copy goes for not as much, but still uh, not as cheap as the Hong Kong version, unfortunately. I just want something for under $60, but I doubt I'll be able to find it. But I did find this in a bundle on Mercari. I bought it with another game I won't spoil. But the price in this one, if you really factor it in, it was about 43 or 44 
before, which is about average of how much it costs. So, you know, I, I think I really got the good deal on the other game, which you'll see. Gravity Rush 2 is very much, you know, a sequel to the original, and I think this is a very good sequel. I love the aesthetic. I love the sort of um, made-up language that they've made up. I love the whole uniqueness of the franchise in general. The music is fantastic. The story is actually pretty good as well. I try not to skip it. Um, and also, just in general, this is a fantastic freaking game. I'm not that far into it, but I think it's very good. And uh, as you can see, it even teases me on the inside with that Gravity Rush Remastered flyer. God, I really want Gravity Rush Remastered, but I doubt I'll be able to find it for cheap. I might have to just bite the bullet one day and buy a $60 copy. You know, at least it'll be brand new sealed or probably resealed, but who cares? Um, Japan Studio is goaded and they should have never been shut down. Anyway, let's talk about the game that just came in. That being a game from Surugaya, yet another one, yet another Japanese game. Yeah, I, I can't stop ordering them, I guess. It's, is it Eeb? Is it Ib? I don't know, it's the name of the protagonist. It's I-B, that's how you spell it. It is a Japanese RPG maker game, funny enough. It's in a similar vein to Yume Nikki or even like Hylix or whatever. It's one of the more unique uh, RPG maker games. And I would say it's definitely worth paying money for as opposed to a vast majority of RPG maker games, which I would say is not exactly worth your time, just so you know. Eeb is a horror style game where at first you end up in a gallery and then somehow you end up in an alternate universe where you have to solve kind of puzzles, kind of not, and basically Basically, you have to uh, survive and not die. And uh, the game is spread out over several rooms and several creepy things that are trying to kill you. It's definitely an interesting game. I could see this being a masterpiece in my eyes. This special edition comes with all sorts of goodies. For example, it comes with an art book and a weird ass puzzle. A weird ass puzzle that uh, is just completely white that uh, I, I have kept sealed for the sake of making sure that nothing gets uh, lost or broken or whatever. It's quite the ordeal, this package, and I'm very happy with it, although it's not too terribly big, which is why I think I'm going to keep the box from here on out. Yeah, it's kind of funny because all, uh, all my boxed games that I have in collector's editions are all Japanese. That being Moon, the Remix RPG on Switch, that being the previously mentioned uh, Kai katana shin either way i would recommend picking this up if you can get it i don't really think this has an american physical i think the only way to get it is either the asian copy or the japanese copy but i recommend this copy if you can find it it's freaking fantastic and it's in english and it has the uh, traditional american style press x to confirm an o to go back so there you go the next game is one that is relatively short but is one that i think is infinitely replayable maybe not infinitely but at the least replayable to an extent where you could play it more than once because there's so many ways to beat levels yes i am talking about the launch title for the ps4 a sony exclusive it is killzone shadow fall yes i even said sony exclusive but it only came out on the ps4 i don't think it came out on the ps3 and i know there's no ps5 for it on the way that i know for sure yes uh, i actually think the game is worthwhile it goes for insanely cheap literally the game store in which i got it from didn't even have the uh, disc lock away they had the disc in the case meaning that i could have stolen this if i wanted to but i decided to pay for it because i'm a good boy who doesn't break the law plus i don't want to be banned from the store because they would have known it was me and they would have banned me or even or if i showed up again they probably would have arrested me too killzone is an fps yes it is a console fps but i think it controls pretty well i do like the sort of uh, abilities you have um it is a brutal game though um yeah you can certainly fuck yourself over depending on where you save or where you last were checkpoint wise i would say for sure you definitely definitely want to be strategic and uh you definitely don't want to fuck yourself like i have many times while playing this game uh the story is whatever but i don't think the story is really meant to be taken all too seriously it kind of takes a back seat for the fantastic gameplay in my opinion this game is definitely one to recommend people although i'd probably say if you have some sort of renting system that you could do like if you go to a library like i have a local library that actually has games on like a lot of places but if your local library doesn't have games consider maybe finding some way to rent it or or just get it for like dirt cheap and then just enjoy what you have for what you have because i paid like what like six bucks for it and i would say for that price it's definitely worth it for like six bucks i would say yeah, the graphics are very good and i think they still hold up to this day i think yeah it is sort of like a more sort of enhanced version of a ps3 game but ps3 is not a bad aesthetic in my opinion i feel like a lot of games could take some notes from the way this game presents its uh graphics as well as more specifically its shading and 
environmental details, I would say. The next game I bought is from Tsurugaya. It's from Japan. I bought the limited edition, and I'll tell you more about that once I show you the game. It's Martian, or Mershin, or how the fuck you say it, Forest. M, A with an umlaut, R, C, H, E, N, space, and then you just spell forest, F, O, R, E, S, T. The limited edition came with a cheap rubber figurine, and when I, when I tried to put it on the stand, the uh, leg just fucking teared off in like one go. It was so fucking frustrating, because I paid extra for the limited edition from that website, Surugaya, and when it came, it just broke instantly, and I was fucking furious. I was like, why didn't I just buy the regular version? I don't even know if it was available at the time, but I would have waited, for sure I would have waited. So yeah, that part sucked, but the game itself, let's go into that. Now the game is decent. I will say first and foremost, the performance is fucking abysmal. The FPS is usually 30, but dips even lower sometimes. There's tons of screen tearing. Uh, the PS4 sounds like a jet engine. Keep in mind, I have a base PS4, but it sounds like a jet engine when I play it. I don't even know if this is PS4 Pro Enhanced. Uh, on the back, it doesn't even look like it has PS4 Pro Enhancement. It's hard to tell because it's all in Japanese. It's uh, Atelier, A-T-E-L-I-E-R, you know? It's kind of that. Um, you play as a young girl called Marchand, or I don't know how to say her name, and she uh, she interacts with her uh, wizard grandpa. I don't even know if he's her grandpa, but he's like a wizard or some shit. You have to gather ingredients, and you have to do various things in order to get sort of remedies to uh, go throughout the game and expand uh, the region. Uh, at some point, you can or another character. I haven't gotten that far. And also, based on the screenshots in the back, apparently at some point, you, you uh, start an RPG mechanic part of the game, which I have not even unlocked. So it goes to show how much I played. And keep in mind, for all these games, Games, and especially this one this is more of a hands-on sort of uh, first impressions as opposed to like a full-on review and it also is the switch version so I don't know how the hell it runs on switch it probably runs even worse but I would say uh, this game I don't know maybe pick, pick it up on PC I don't even know if it's optimized on PC either at least I would hope so I mean I would hope it, it would be optimized on PC I, I don't know if I'd recommend it because like it was making me sick at some point just the uh, amount of screen tearing and low FPS was just not making my stomach sit well so I, I don't know what to say about it um it, it's probably out of all the games i'm going to show you today the one that i'm probably the most disappointed in if i'm being real hey everybody uh you may notice i got new cans yep they're akg k271s i got them off of music go round a website and uh, a retailer that also is owned by the same people who own uh, once upon a child yes uh these were ten dollars plus however much like crazy shipping like 30 plus bucks uh it, it doesn't matter where you are in the country i guess if you're not from where this where this specific store is which is Natick, Boston, Massachusetts. It costs like a ridiculous amount to ship to anywhere else in the country. Even when you factor in that plus shipping it's still an insane deal because they thought these were K240s. Yes they thought these were AKG K240s. Yes they didn't have the cord and yes the uh, insulation for the uh, pads is uh, you know kind of gross and, and one of the cups is glued together but it works just fine. It's a freaking fantastic deal. These are AKG K271 Mark 1s too. They're not even the Mark 2 ones that are way more common. These ones are actually made in Austria by the original AKG before they went under. One thing I will say before we move on to the next game is I forgot to mention that some of the games that I've already shown and some of the games I will show have HDR and even on the base PS4 you can play with HDR. I know this because the monitor that I have on the right side of my two monitors has HDR. That's the one I've hooked up to the PS4 and whenever I play PS4 games with HDR it turns on the HDR which is freaking awesome. I love it. And I don't know if this next game has HDR you know who cares if it does or doesn't whoa sorry for the sudden jump cut let me actually review the headphones that i uh, just talked about before we move on to the next game like planned and by the way if you're curious why all of a sudden this jump cut occurred it's because everything past the jump cut at that recording the sound cut out so uh it was completely useless so actually uh speaking of the headphones the headphones are closed backs they are a lot warmer uh to the touch they're a lot more comfortable but sound wise they're not as warm and they definitely have a slightly different sound sound they have a slightly different acoustic i would say and with the garfield softies that i've inserted as the insulation inside of these headphones because uh like i said the previous ones were uh, gross and because uh the softies were on a pair of headphones that i don't really use and they don't really sound that well yeah this, it kind of slightly alters the sound and makes it a little bit more bassy but overall i would say the sound is more bassy and it's definitely more wide in scope as opposed to the other headphones that i own they're they're different and i like them because they're different but i wouldn't say they're necessarily a replacement for the akg k240s i would say 
overall, um, if you can find these for cheap, which I believe the uh, Music Gurong, uh, as of recording this, still has another one of these exact same headphones on um, this labeled as an AKG K240 on their website. So if you want to pick that up, you can. I'd recommend it. Uh, the cable that I got, I got from Amazon and uh, the Garfield Softies, I would say just don't use those for insulation. Just get something off of like Amazon for insulation if, if those headphones have bad insulation or whatever. Without further ado, we will move on to the next game in the next segment. So see you later. Peace. Hello, I am back and let's just talk about the goddamn game already. Yes, the next game in the collection is medieval spelled weird not spelled like your traditional spelling of medieval it is made by other ocean emmerville is originally a uh, ps1 game it is being remade or it was remade for the playstation 4 uh, a little bit later in its lifespan there's also a uh, psp reboot at some point that i never played but this game is kind of like an action adventure slash uh, 3d platformer game you play a sir daniel fortescue and get revived for some reason the bad guy is bad and he uh he's doing the same thing he did back in the day i guess he's like a necromancer or whatever the fuck i don't remember it, it's not too deep so don't worry about it i kind of suck at it i know um it's not supposed to be that hard of a game but these kind of games are just not my forte when it comes to skill the game uh, looks wise looks quite good in my opinion it definitely holds up you know a generation past because let's be real the ps4 and the ps5 don't really have too much of a difference when it comes to the looks i know the base ps4 and if you, if you were to compare it with the ps5 looks radically different overall I, I do think it's it still holds up quite a bit even on the base ps4 anyway uh that's all i gotta say and that's the bottom line because but mondo says so sorry Next up is a Japanese game, and it's a game that I had to write down the title because it's so stupidly long and hard to remember. Yes, it's Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid Burst Forth with two exclamation points. Choro uh, dash gone, spelled C-H-O-R-O dash G-O-N. A star symbol in breath, so say it in full, it's Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid Burst Forth Choro gone breath. Yes, it's this game in question. It's a Japanese PS4 game in English by Bushiro. And believe it or not, it's a Don Maku game, as they call it in Japan, or an STG, or as we know in America, a bullet hell. It's a Toho clone. Yes, it's in the style of Toho, one of my favorite franchises. Inside the case is a white little paper. Inside that white paper is a uh, freaking card from a game called Weiss Schwartz. I think that's how you say that. Or Schwartz. I I don't know i'm not very good with german english is more of my forte because i am an american filthy fucking american but behind that white paper is two ads one for another card in that same series the vice for series and the other one is uh I, i'm assuming a ad for one of the manga that's coming out i don't know i don't i don't read japanese because just like german i only speak english because I am a filthy fucking American, as I said before. But I do appreciate fine art, and this appears to be fine art. I'm a big fan of shoot 'em ups in general, and especially the previously mentioned Don Maku, SGG, Bullet Hell, uh, Toho Clone, whatever the fuck you want to call it. This is actually, I would say, a mid tier uh, Toho Clone. I would say it's pretty decent. It definitely follows a lot of the trends of the uh, later Toho series. I do like a lot of the fan games on, that I have purchased on Steam a lot better, I would say. But overall, this is a decent shoot 'em up in general general it also has cgs in it which i'm sure you could uh watch one-handed if you want you know if you know what i mean you play as the three titular characters and i mean titular i really do uh yeah you play as uh the three main ones including the little lolly girl but you don't play as the really big booball lady she's only a support character which i'm sure many fans are disappointed about this is uh definitely the uh shooty shooty kind of game that i do enjoy quite a bit let's move on baby whoop whoop Real quick before we move on, I want to talk about one last thing about this game. This game in particular. It's it's a Japanese PS4 game in English, but believe it or not, this is the only Japanese version of this game that is in English natively. The uh, Switch version is actually not in English in Japan. It's only the Western physical that has English by default. I guess also the European as well. But does that count for the West? I don't know. I guess part of Europe's in the West, part of it's not. This version uh, is indeed the only one in Japan in English. I also encountered 
something similar for the PS4 copy of the Shinchan game that I bought ages ago of the Japanese version on the Switch, which was not in English. I ended up having to buy the American version of that uh, uh, Shinchan game to get it to play in English physically from my Switch. But apparently the PS4 version, which came out later, uh, that version, regardless of region, is in English, which I thought was kind of crazy. At the time when I bought the American Shinchan game, I actually did not own a PS4, so there is that. Moving on. One Piece Odyssey is an RPG. The only one for me and makes me want to pee. Shout outs to Joe Redifer and his awesome Final Fantasy song that he did way back in the day. He is now the only member of GameSack left and one of my favorite YouTubers as well. So shout outs to him and whoever animated that original video on Newgrounds. Uh, one Piece Odyssey is a... Uh, freaking RPG like I said before but it's made by Bandai Namco it's sort of like an exploration style RPG it's it's definitely turn based and it has more of a directional based sort of like RPG mechanic as opposed to like the standard static movement similar to something like you know the Falcom sort of Legend of Cold Steel games or whatever the hell they're called Trials of Cold Steel whatever the fuck I don't remember anyway um yeah it's similar to that it's got nice graphics it's got nice visuals it's got nice uh story uh, as much as I can understand of it because I've never really seen uh One Piece in general, I tend to only uh, recall the uh, Four Kids dub. In fact, believe it or not, as a kid, I was actually disappointed when the Four Kids dub ended. Whenever I started watching the, you know, proper dub of the anime, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, what happened to my favorite characters? And to this day, I will still say that one, some of the voice actors from that show deserve some sort of roles in modern stuff because they're pretty good. And two, the theme song for the first arc of the show that was put in the Four Kids dub is freaking fantastic. And I will attest to that to this very day, as cheesy as it is. But nothing beats the goaded Four Kids freaking Yu-Gi-Oh dub. That shit's impressive. One Piece Odyssey has some exploration elements like I mentioned before. It's a lot different though gameplay wise than the other uh, One Piece games. Own. One Piece World Seeker as well as that One Piece game that was previously on 3DS that was later ported to Switch. Don't remember the name. It ends with an R I believe. Whatever that means. This game on the other hand is definitely more uh, focused on being linear but at the same time having more of a slight open-endedness to it but not enough where I call it an open world game. Whereas One Piece the R game had more of a you know a mission based structure and uh one piece world seeker is definitely full on exploration both those games are beat em ups though i just like the fact that this is a middle of the road rpg you know with plenty of fun mechanics and elements that i like about all the other uh, anime slop that man and puts out i know a lot of people are turned off by it but i really like this kind of output you know uh one piece games are just my jam i don't know i, I also like the uh the one piece uh fighter on uh gamecube the one that had the four kids dub funny enough I used to play that game all the time when i was a kid so I, I mean in general i just like 3d anime arena fighters and i also like uh anime rpgs so this is right up my alley i just think in general just due to the modern trends of uh modern gaming you know the fact that so many developers focus on these vast worlds and you know diverse characters and like diversity to a fault like super woke shit basically i won't go into it it's you know, i'm not trying to be political or anything but in general they just make things super bloated they put make the story black and boring in general they just make shit like way too ambitious and and then they fail in every aspect of game development because they don't have talented programmers and talented developers and talented artists. And on top of those untalented artists, they just have insane crunch. And basically the whole industry is fucked. And not to blackball anybody, but I think gaming is, is at its lowest point it's ever been. And I'm just trying to enjoy the slop, man. I'm just trying to enjoy what I can, skip as much story as I can, you know, just enjoy whatever the fuck I want. And this is one of the games I wanted to play. It's only about like 20 bucks, maybe a little bit less. It was brand new CL. I said, screw it, why not? You know, if you notice, it even has like that PS4 upgrade ability, which I, you may notice a lot of games in this collection actually do have that as well. I, I don't really plan on upgrading to PS5 anytime soon. Anyway, this is a long ass tangent I've been on about various subjects, so I will just leave this where it stands. And fuck what the critics say, the critics are usually wrong about stuff like this. They can't just enjoy a game that sets out to be what it aims to be, which is just a middleware game. Yes, we're going into D-Gen territories because we're talking about the infamous One Chan Bara series, and more specifically, we're talking about One Chan Bara Z2 Chaos, published by XC, which is now under the umbrella of Marvelous. This is developed by Tamsoft, which is now, if I'm not mistaken, under the D4 publishing wing of uh, Bandai Namco. Yes, if you didn't know, D4 publishing is actually owned by Bandai Namco. How crazy is that? This is one of the earlier games in the One Chan Bara series. I 
I believe it originally started out on the uh, 360 as like an imported game that uh, had a different name and whatnot. But this is the uh, first game that I've owned in this series. I've been wanting to play the series for a while. She plays a bikini clad samurai with a cowboy hat and uh, her various friends of various sizes and busts and sex appeal and whatnot. Some being uh, more of the illegal side and some being very legal indeed. Uh, yes, we're talking about the cast of Oni Chambara being zombie killers because they use swords and chainsaws and all sorts of things to defeat zombies. Yes, indeed, it is a zombie killing game. This game, believe it or not, has a certified freaking manual squad hype moment as well as a reversible cover. Funny that. A reversible cover, although I don't really use the reversible cover because of the fact that it doesn't have this good old fashioned bullshit on the back with the white labels and whatnot. Yeah, very, very tasteless, as you can see. Bikini, sword, zombies, chainsaws equals chaos. You know, the typical schlock that you love to see. This I got as part of a, a bundle that I mentioned earlier with uh, Gravity Rush 2. I believe it was around 80 bucks total, I want to say. Uh, the better deal of the two was definitely this game as opposed to the other game being Gravity Rush 2. This one I got for significantly cheaper than what I think uh, it goes for on eBay at the moment. There was that, whereas the other game, uh, Gravity Rush 2, I got for about on par with how much it costs. Either way, I'm glad I got it because it is a freaking fantastic game. I haven't played much of it, keep in mind. Now, I, I also wanted to play the uh, the prequel game, Oni Chambara Origins. I've heard mixed things on it. I know a uh, YouTuber I follow said he really liked it. But he's pretty much the only one, really, because other people have said it's very disappointing. I mean, the reviews on it are definitely mixed, and uh, I've also heard it's not as good as this game, which I thought was kind of surprising given it looked a lot more refined and clean, but maybe it's just the gameplay. I don't know. You know, as, as we know, gameplay is king, so who knows? Either way, though, uh, I recommend this game because this game is freaking awesome. Although, I, maybe not physically, though, because it is kind of expensive. Yeah, but I've, I don't know. I don't necessarily know if the PC port is any good. But if it is, then pick that up, maybe, or maybe just pick this up on sale on the on the PSN, bitch. Hey, real quick, a few corrections. Uh, first off, the game that I was talking about is One Chanbara Origin, not Origins. Uh, the company that publishes uh, One Chanbara and owns One Chanbara is D3 publisher, not D4 publisher, like I said in the video. The company that made uh, One Chambara uh, Z2 Chaos uh, Tamsoft is not owned by Bandai Namco, nor owned by D3 publisher. Uh, they did develop the One Chambara series originally, and that is owned by D3 publisher, but they are an independent company, and they have since made games that are completely separate and owned by other companies. That's all the corrections I gotta say, so see you later. Peace. Next up is a game that I'm kind of disappointed with a little bit, simply because one, it requires internet, which is bullshit, I say bullshit indeed. And second of all, because it doesn't play exactly the best, it does have a VR mode, so maybe the VR mode's better, I don't know. Yes, we're talking about a game that I've wanted for a long time, but turns out when I got it, it wasn't that good. It's freaking Puzzle Bobble 3D Vacation Odyssey, published by Enin and developed by Servios. Yes, it's your very bare-bones 3D version of Puzzle Bobble, previously known as Bust a Move, which if you've seen previous videos of mine, you know I hated the name bust a move so I'm so happy that nowadays Taito has now universally accepted the fact that the game should and always will be called from now on Puzzle Bobble which makes way more sense considering it's a spin-off of Bubble Bobble play as a very cute dinosaurs in a 3D beach environment and your goal is to uh, pop a bubbles in a specific way in a certain time limit or a certain amount of moves or what have you and clear the level. The game doesn't have very much music or very much you know graphical intensity I would say but it is definitely a cute time I would say. What the fuck are you talking about? But realistically you're not going to get a whole lot of hours into this but before I paid for it like 30 bucks probably. It's all right it also has a uh, ps5 upgrade i can't imagine that'd be too much better uh, one thing i will say though is like I, i'm really irritated that in the non-vr version you can't use the gyro on the ps4 controller to move the uh reticle to uh pop the bubbles that'd be really cool if you could do that i think that'd make the game way better and it's all right the game itself is 
All right, apparently it is PlayStation Move uh, capable. It has to be only in the VR mode, I would think, right? It would have to be only in the VR mode. It says on online play optional on the back, but then why does it require an internet connection? That I don't know. Apparently it also has cross play. I just looked in the back. I'm literally just reading off the back because I don't really know what else to talk about, really. Snood is probably the closest clone to Puzzle Bobble that I like, but you can't really uh, get any better than Puzzle Bobble in my opinion. I used to own the PSP uh, versions of the game. Uh, the one that's exclusive to Japan and the one in the follow-up that made its way to the West. I also used to own the Saturn version of Puzzle Bobble. I basically, I used to be a Puzzle Bobble fanatic. So that's why I picked this up, because I think it's a very underrated series. Although this one, probably properly rated. It's not that good of a game, let's be real. Anywho, I've talked about this way longer than I should have. The last thing I will talk about, because I completely forgot to mention it, is it comes with an uh, instruction manual. Or I guess it's called an instruction sheet. So an instruction sheet hype moment right here, baby. Let's go. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, it just gives you the proper sort of ways to play in uh, various different languages, so it's pretty useless, honestly. Anyway, I'm thirsty as fuck. Next up is a game developed by Sumo Sheffield, which I didn't even know was a subsidiary of Sumo Digital. I didn't even know Sumo Digital had subsidiaries, but I think these are the devs that also made the other game in this series, the third game. Yes, this is a, is a spin-off of a well-known series developed by Media Molecule. Without further ado, let me present to you Sackboy A Big Adventure. I keep wanting to say Sackboy's Big Adventure, like, you know, like JoJo's Bizarre adventure or some shit but no it's just sack boy a big adventure yes um it is a 3d platformer in the style of like super mario 3d world it's kind of like a shameless ripoff in a way it still has that element of little big planet that i do enjoy it has that sort of like grabbing the sort of fabrics and collecting these bubble things that can also give you trinkets things for your little sack boy uh, it has that sort of online capability you know of interacting with other players that i enjoyed from the previous games but i won't use those because i don't pay for online so there's that i actually used to play a uh, little big planet one and two on psp and i actually used the online servers to upload and like download levels and whatnot you know back when the actual uh, sony uh, online play was free back when that was a thing you know now you have to pay an exorbitant fee thanks xbox you fucking pricks kind of a shame this is the only game you can really play online with because like the ones uh one and two on uh, ps3 can't play obviously those servers are dead and the servers for three which not only on ps3 but on ps4 are shut down because the developers had a problem with the like the servers you know shutting down and instead of just repairing them they're like let's keep it shut down because it's not exactly worth the investment repairing it so it's like fuck what am i supposed to do and thankfully i don't really play online too much but for a game like that it, it is very integral for online play and this one not so much because it has a beefy single player uh campaign it is certainly one where i could imagine myself playing with some friends even maybe uh i will say this much the story is definitely like babby's first fucking platformer you know of course there's like the the big bad Sackboy villain, he's like, Mwahaha, I will fucking destroy the world and cause a massive black hole and whatnot. And of course, they're like, you know, the little villagers, like, ah, ah, fight, ah. like, they can't even talk or whatever. He's like, Oh, I'm so much smarter than you, haha. -ha. And then, like, he, he tries to, like, fucking destroy the world. And you, you, you as Sackboy is like, you're like, I'm the chosen one, dude. Except for he goes, like, ah, ah, ah. And, yeah, and he has to, like, fucking save the world, you know, whatnot. You're, like, typical bullshit, generic ass story. They're like, Oh, save the day. And it's, it's humiliation. I'm so Sorry, keep that in mind. Anyway, um, yeah, the game it has a uh, decent music. It definitely has good visuals. Uh, it's one of those games that has the HDR capability even on the PS4, like I mentioned before. I do have a monitor that supports HDR, like I said. The graphics are decent even on the base PS4, in my opinion. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really seem like it adds that much for the PS5 version. Maybe it adds that gimmicky sort of like like a haptic feedback sort of thing. But yeah, it's it's decent, you know, for for a base PS4 game. Uh, and I will say, yeah, uh, pick this up if you enjoy 3d platformers and you don't own uh, a nintendo system or you, you're just too lazy to buy super mario 3d world on nintendo switch like i am because you're waiting for it to go on sale and it never does this game i got for super cheap it's got for less than like 20 bucks but it's sealed online it probably was resealed but i don't really give a shit because as long as it's in the best condition that it can be and it's the cheapest i don't give a shit next up is a game that's also ps5 upgradable it's published by atlas and also developed by atlas it's made in the unity engine it's a long awaited sequel to a game that uh, not many people played back in the day. It's freaking Soul Hackers 2. It's a sequel to Shin Megami Tensei Soul Hackers. This game is pretty freaking cool. It's a stand. It's 
your standard RPG affair from Atlas. Definitely reminds me of uh, that Digimon game that I own on Nintendo Switch because I think that game is pretty much a clone of the Soul Hackers format. And uh, funny enough, when you look inside, it has a freaking uh, launch edition plastic sleeve containing plastic cars. Yes, this game was pretty cheap. I bought it brand new sealed for about, you know, I want to say like 20 bucks. Like, I mean, pretty much most of these games are significantly cheaper than Switch games. Switch games are actually pretty damn expensive compared to PS4 games. If I'm going to pick games to collect from here on out, it'll probably be PS4 games. Now, I don't know what the music's like because I've been playing mostly muted and the graphics are pretty decent. You know, I mean, I'm sure they're a lot, they're a lot better on PS5. Uh, the story wise, although I've been skipping, let's be real. Um, I don't give two shits about the story, even though it is an RPG. So I really, I should be giving a shit, but I don't. Uh, I've heard it's actually kind of like short for an RPG, but I don't really care because I think getting games that go on for way too long kind of piss me off, honestly. Yeah, if I were to say something uh, good about this game, I would say it certainly has a good gameplay loop, in my opinion. I do like the way the uh, combat plays, and I do like the way the uh, world is laid out. You know, it definitely reminds me of some of my favorite RPGs. Yeah, uh, I would say the main protagonist is certainly interesting looking. I mean, she definitely follows the sort of uh, format of your typical, you know, cyber futuristic RPG sort of protagonist. I and mean, it certainly isn't the most unique thing. I mean, I play games just like it, but pretty cool, I would say. Uh, I would say pick it up for cheap like I did and you will have a fan freaking tastic time. I promise you that. That's it. Anyway, I'll uh, see you in a little bit. The next game in alphabetical order is actually coming from Japan. Yes, I ordered yet another game. This video will never fucking end. And I'll see you when that game arrives, whenever that is. So, time travel incoming. Yo, what's up? We're taking another brief break from uh, talking about PS4 games because the next game that is coming from uh, Surugaya is taking longer than freaking expected. So instead, we're talking about a Switch game, that being Super Sammy Roll. Yes, I actually did get one Switch game in between the last video. Yes, it's a freaking limited run game, but not an official numbered one. But grr, regardless, those greedy fucking bastards. Yes, it's a 3D platformer developed by Sanzai. Uh, this one is ported to consoles by X+. Plus. This is a freaking 3D platformer. It has tons of movement options. It's definitely kind of reminiscent of Sonic, but with more of like a sort of speed running sort of uh, Captain Toad style level, but with sort of, uh, you know, Super Mario Sunshine maybe movement without the flood, if you know what I'm talking about. That sort of movement, it's it's a unique platformer for sure. The sort of movement capabilities of Sammy are freaking nice as hell. And guess what? This uh, physical has a freaking manual, so manual freaking squad hype. Yes, it's a beefy manual too. It's quite the, quite the nostalgic piece of manual goodness. This game, uh, I've not played very much of it. I can stop saying that because with every game, I've not played very much of it. Thank you, Nitro Rad, for recommending it to me through your video. I would have never known to pick up this really obscure game that doesn't really look very good on the surface, but really is very good. So that's all I got to say about that. And let's move on to the next segment where hopefully I finally talk about PS4 games. Let's a freaking go, baby. Next up is a game in a long running RPG series developed by various developers over the years and published entirely by Square Enix or their former subsidiary Enix. Yes, we're talking about a long-running series that has a lot of confusing remakes and remasters. Yes, we're talking about Star Ocean The Second Story R. This is a PS4 game exclusive to the region of Japan, at least physically. I think it's also released in Asia. But yes, if you want to play it on ps4 physically you have to buy the japanese version ps5 there is a version in the west but ps4 no dice but before we get started talking about the actual game itself let's talk about the lineage i mentioned earlier the confusing lineage of the first two games first game is of course star ocean 4 the super famicom released by triace uh, in japan in 1996 triace was the developer of the first two games Games, at least the first two incarnations. The first remake of the game was uh, Star Ocean First Departure, released on the PSP in 2007 in Japan. North American PAL regions got it in 2008, and it was uh, developed by Toze. And uh, that game then got a remaster uh, that was called Star Ocean First Departure R. It was released on Nintendo Switch, which is the version that I own digitally. I don't think there is a physical version for Nintendo Switch. There's also a PS4 version that came out worldwide in 2019. 
And then of course there's Star Ocean the Second Story. That was developed on the PS1, also by Tri-Ace. It was released in Japan in 1998, and it was the first Star Ocean game to release in Western territories, at least in North America in 1999 and PAL regions in 2000. But the remake came out in uh, 2008 in Japan, North America, and Australia, and Europe in 2009. It's of course Star Ocean Second Evolution for PSP, developed also by Toze. Yes, this game also then got a Japanese-only release called Star Ocean Second Evolution Download Version, released for PS4, PS Vita, PS3, is developed by Gem Drops, and uh, that was again only released in Japan. The game got entirely remade from the ground up, and it was called Star Ocean The Second Story R, retained the name of the original game released way back when. That was released for PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch, and Windows. To recap, I only own Star Ocean First Departure R for Nintendo Switch, and I also own this game for PS4. Now this game actually came with, believe it or not, it came with a code. The code uh, actually is on the back. Even if I did show you it, you couldn't actually use it because it's already been used. Although, believe it or not, I think I could have actually used it had it not been used because I don't think the codes are region exclusive because when I entered it, it didn't say, oh, this code is not available in your region. It just said the code was already used. The game also has, as you can see, a reversible cover, and I might actually switch it to that at some point because the reversible cover actually has has like the stuff on the back that I typically like. Now let's finally talk about the game itself. I actually rented the game at my uh, local library uh, for a Nintendo Switch way back when, back before I even owned a PS4. So I did actually play a little bit of it, but this time when I played it on the PS4, I decided not to skip the story. I know, an RPG, not skipping a story, how crazy is that? And I will say it is very formulaic, but you have to keep in mind that when the game came out, it wasn't as formulaic as it is now. And certainly it is refreshing when it comes to modern storytelling being so drek. The voice uh, there's multiple options it, either based on the second evolution or the R version I actually went with the second evolution version you can also change the graphics you can make it so that the display events you know the, the people talking you know with the portraits you can say if that shows up or not you can also change the music to either be the original which is based off second evolution or the uh, arrangement which is based off uh, you know second story R I went with second story R I mean they didn't really give me a whole lot of choices to actually listen to the music and compare the two you play as either the main character Claude C. Uh, Kenny, who is the uh, son of the uh, general, who is, you know, like the savior of Earth or whatever. Or you play as a, a woman, I forget her name. She is a uh, person on a alien planet, Claude, or in this case I named him Clunch. Clunch gets isekai into this world, and she believes he's the hero of light, which is like an ancient warrior that was supposedly supposed to uh, help save the uh, world that they inhabit, an alien planet far away from bad guys and you know from bad monsters and from meteorites and all the shit and it, it's an interesting story if, if not you know like I said before formulaic the gameplay is very simple basically it, it's just your standard you know action RPG with turn-based uh, elements as well as random battles you know and by turn-based elements I really mean just like you can you can switch the mode of attack you can pause it's kind of like an active combat system but with more of an action RPG focus I know I'm using a lot of buzzwords but I swear this makes sense what I say pick up this physical maybe not i'd say probably just buy the digital copy it goes for relatively cheap or if you own a ps5 buy the ps5 physical it's probably a lot cheaper than what i paid for it hey what's up anyway let's talk about the next game next game also starts with uh star but it's not star ocean it's a very well-known series and a very critically acclaimed theory that especially recently with many of the uh very good and very long-running tv shows as well as the uh sequel trilogy being very good especially the second one of the sequel trilogy. That one's the best one. Talking about Star Wars with Star Wars Squadrons. Yep, it's not Battlefront. It's not freaking uh, Jedi Fallen Order, whatever the fuck it's called. We're talking about Star Wars Squadrons by the dreaded EA. Oh no. Um, yes, it's a PSVR uh, capable game, but God knows I don't own PSVR. I don't really ever plan to own PSVR. I know um, I certainly don't have the space for it. Plus, um, shit is not really in my price range at the moment. Don't really have very many games I want to play for it you know typical things uh yes it's made by motive uh and uh it's certainly a game to behold it's very cheap though it, i got it for like less than 20 dollars, and it's actually i think worth that price uh I, I got it for like way less than 20 dollars. i think i got it for like 12 or 13 bucks i don't know if it was brand new sealed but i got it for super cheap guess what it's an ea game that has no microtransactions it's not live service it's freaking single player i mean it has multiplayer but uh good luck trying to play that because nobody's going to be able to play with you because the online is dead but 
Blood has a solid single parent campaign. The story's probably whatever. I'm, I completely skip it because God knows modern Star Wars, bleh. EA storytelling, bleh. Modern AAA gaming storytelling, bleh. Yeah, fuck all that shit, bro. I'm I'm just in it for the freaking gameplay, which is king, baby. It's your freaking typical arcadey sort of flight sim. Uh, more emphasis on, on arcadey, though. Not very much of a simulator. But you play as either a good guy or a bad guy, a rebel or the imperial, or whatever the hell they're called in this uh, version of the game. You know, uh, I would say this is definitely a fun game. I've heard it's kind of short. Don't really care about that, considering I didn't pay all too much for it, truth be told. I would say out of all the Star Wars games that you can pick up nowadays, this one's not too bad. Well, anyway, let's move on to the next game. So, see ya. Hey, I forgot something. Uh, this game, right here, has a freaking controller guide. So, a controller guide hype, maybe? Nah, no hype for that shit. That shit's lame as hell. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, that's all I had to show. So, see ya in the next segment. Bye! Next up, we're talking about a series long-running, mostly made by a man named Jeff Minner of Llamasoft. Yes, it started all the way back on the Atari Jaguar, later ported by another studio. That's the game that's not made by Jeff Minner. On, a uh, PlayStation 1 and Sega Saturn. And then the second game made by freaking Jeff Minter was on the new on what the hell is a new on and then uh there was a game called txk uh that was inspired by this game series then they got into hot water with atari there was a lawsuit about it they ended up coming to a settlement and as a result we got this game tempest 4000 by jeff minter like i mentioned before published by atari which is just infograms in their cosplay yes we're talking about a game that is also on pc but doesn't have mouse support which is why i got the console port because i'm like if i'm gonna play with the controller I might as well get it for cheap on ps4 yes this is very cheap i don't recall if i got this new but if i did that's pretty cool either way though it's a pretty freaking awesome game uh, is it as good as tempest 3000 nobody knows because it's, it's only on this really obscure system called the nuon but 2000 uh, i think it's slightly better than 2000 maybe 2000 is pretty good but honestly x3 is pretty much pretty much plays the same and uh there's a game as well i think called space giraffe that plays pretty similar to this that jeff mincer made on pc that one's pretty good too tempest 4000 probably one of the best ones i haven't played txk i've heard it's actually better than Tempest 4000 but you know what so be it uh i love jeff minter stuff i own pretty much all of his games i even own aka r on pc and that shit crashes immediately upon playing it so i can't even play it and i own it again this is you get another game to own in the jeff minter uh franchise yes uh it's if, you, if you're not familiar with how tempest plays basically you're, you're on a grid based system 3d wise with this little uh like claw based dude that has like a figure like this and basically he like kind of moves from side to side and you shoot below the enemies that are trying to go up and fuck with you or kill you or, or bring you down and basically it's your it's arcadey goodness with fantastic music would i say pick up this game 100 percent would i say pick it up on pc i mean until they include mouse support or hell even better trackball support i'd say probably not buy the console support in my opinion it's way better Anyway, yeah, so not much to talk about. It's just fucking Tempest 4000. What more is there to say? It's two Suru Gaia games in a row. We're talking about first, uh, the second to last game in my collection. The video is almost over. I know I've spent damn near a month recording every single part of this fucking video. Yes, it's Toho Luna Nights. Yeah, and you know what Toho Luna Nights came with? A freaking soundtrack, a two disc original soundtrack. Yes, indeed, looky here, look. There's disc two, and you flip it over, and what do you have? Disc one. Yes, it came with a freaking soundtrack. When I ordered the game off Sierra Guy, I had no clue that it came with a freaking soundtrack. Isn't that amazing? And it was brand new, it was sealed. And this game, I'm pretty sure was too. If you look inside, looky right here, nice little alternate a cover on the back if i freaking take this piece of paper out you get look see it says uh toho luna nights right about here this is quite the freaking package and the game itself is a toho based uh metroidvania and i love myself some metroidvanias and i especially love myself some toho based properties yes i love toho fan games they're some of my favorite i literally just bought a freaking toho fan game for the steam summer sale and toho luna nights is very 
very much inspired by Castlevania Symphony of the Night, but it has the blood grazing system that I love from Toho. It has plenty of generous checkpoints. It has nice progression, nice boss encounters. It has a nice layout of the castle that you go to. Overall, it's a freaking fan freaking fantastic game, and the soundtrack pretty good too. It's actually pretty catchy, but most Toho fan soundtracks are pretty catchy. A lot of times I'd say they're even more catchy than the actual, you know, Toho music you hear in Zun's uh, Toho games. And the physical doesn't cost all that much. It, it costs significantly cheaper than the freaking uh, Switch port. This is yet again another Japanese physical game, another one that is in English, and it's one that I recommend you pick up 100%. Support uh, the fan games and support Zun by buying the actual Toho games. They're worth it, trust me. I love the freaking franchise. I am obsessed. Like I said though before in previous videos, I am not no freaking kid diddler. I love the freaking gameplay. Could not get two craps about the story, okay? Get that through your sick head. Anyway, uh, peace. We are finally at the last game of the video. And guess what? The first segment you saw in this video was from freaking May 29th. It is now June 28th. That is a long ass time to be recording. I didn't record every day, but I damn near did. I mean, there's so many segments to this freaking video. Oh my God, dude, this took forever, but we're finally here. I've decided for once in my life to make bullet points on this freaking part of the video because I'm so desperate to get all my points out and I really don't want to spend any longer on this freaking video. I've done countless takes, countless mess ups, countless re-recordings. It's insane how much freaking effort I put into this shit. So uh, we're going to get the bullet points out and we're going to talk about the last game in the video. The last game in the video is none other than The Witch in the Hundred Night Revival Edition. It's right freaking here. Yes, and as you can see, there's Booba on the cover. I'm not sure if it's legal Booba, but it is Booba, and uh, that makes me happy. I got it on Sewer Gaia. The condition was surprisingly used considering Japanese standards. I mean, it looked used, which is crazy because most get Japanese games that I get from uh, Sewer Gaia look damn near new. They look immaculate. So if I open this up, you'll see we're ending with a freaking manual squad hype moment let's freaking go that's a rare thing on the ps4 trust me it's way more common on switch uh yeah this game uh is actually pretty cheap uh it's currently on sale on the playstation store for 4.79 but by the time you're seeing this video it's probably not on sale i paid a little bit less than uh 17.50 for the physical copy on super gaia this is an actual nis japanese physical that is in english even nintendo switch nis physicals are not in english in japan probably because this is a rematch this game originally came out on PS3 and it was published and translated by NAS in America. So I'm presuming when they made this physical copy in Japan, they just used the translation from the previous generation. Yeah, this is only a T rating, by the way. There's tons of boobs and swearing and fucking, you know, like blood and whatnot. Like, I, I have no idea why the hell this is T rated. I guess just standards have gone way uh, down the toilet ever since uh, freaking Dawn of the Millennium. Uh, this is a Diablo class. Clone. Yes, let's talk about the actual game. It's a it has a good art style, but it's a Diablo clone. Yeah, it's a freaking uh, sort of over the head sort of make a spell, attack some things, you know, sort of RPG. Uh, it, it, I haven't gotten very far in it. The music's pretty decent, you know, and overall it's a freaking great game. I cannot wait to play more of this shit. Believe it or not, because I've been making this video, I haven't really had the time to freaking play all the games that I've been showing you. So by the time I get done with this shit, I'll actually have played all the games that I own a lot more. God damn, it's almost as if like I should have fucking waited until I've played this shit thoroughly to make the video, but had I not done that, I probably would have had like 50 games and then it would have taken even longer, so fuck, dude. So either way, um, I'm glad I'm finally freaking done with this godforsaken video. Now I have to go to the editing bay and freaking chop this up all together. That's gonna take forever as well. God damn. Without further ado, uh, goodbye.